to another day of Chess on Psychology. Hope you're having a great middle of your week. Um, today is a very special day because I am trying something new for the YouTube channel. Just a little bit. I really just kind of um, want to get your ideas on how this feels to have like a little mysterious game. So this is a very cool thumbnail and <clears throat> this was a um, idea that I got inspired by to do from Caleb and Talia yesterday in our club meeting. So yeah, we're gonna try and guess this world championship match game. If you're having a hard time uh, guessing it, um, <clears throat> you can only try, I mean even if you get like one of the players, it'll be great too. If you get more than that, that is perfect. And while we're at it, um, I would like to kind of make sure that my audio, video, everything looks good. We have a cat missing up here, but he's kind of chilling around. It's super windy here in St. Louis. It's not cold, but anyways. Oh, I see that there's an increase of followers from our Twitch too. Lovely. Alrighty. I want to go ahead and get started because if we end up having more time then i would like to actually show you just a little bit more on the this amazing player but we usually tend to be able to analyze deeply only one game uh, per hour or so so i'm uh yeah if we can get through this one pretty nicely i will be very happy and this is somewhat of a um somewhat of a long game uh, definitely not not the longest but all right so we're gonna start. I'm gonna do my best not to not to accidentally tell their names because I have done that before. All right. So we got the Rui Lopez going. I kind of want to get a little bit in the chat on who do who do you guys think it might be? Uh, the opening is a Rui Lopez um, with Knight F6. Now, who do you think? Do you think this might be a little clue on who is it any ah nope okay we got one tall Just castle. 
And that's another good day, but as in, as with pretty much any Roy Lopez, White's eventually gonna wanna do this D4. So it's just a matter of um, trying to get prepared for it. Uh, there are some interesting inputs on still who this champion is. I'll tell you what, I have seen the answer in the, the chat from one or two people, but um, let's, let's keep the mystery. Let's keep it more chess related. So I want to I wanna come back, circle back to the chess part of it and ask you, what do you want to do as white? You know that black is keeping the bishop back there, probably going to flank it to it. You know that you eventually going to want to do this d4 as white. Are you going to do it now? Are you going to start preparing for it? Are you going to cast it? What are you going to do? You have a bunch of cool moves as white. You have a big variety. But it's really important to try and um, actually have it set for you being actually able to decide on where how to go. I'll tell you who it's, who it's not. It's not Magnus. I'll give you that much. Maybe every 10 minutes I should give you a little hint of who it's not. Well, Castle. I think Castle is a very cool idea, Chess Boom. So, um, Castle, you don't really have to play this Castle move. You could simply try and keep it still interesting in the center. So, let's, 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 let's uh, still think about this position. Would you want to try c3d4? Would you want to try d4 right away? Or are you still going to go with Castle? I am not really a big fan of going knight to c3. It looks pretty cool, but I don't think it's going to work out that great. Mainly because if you were to do this knight c3, then you're never going to really do this c3 d4. Let me rephrase it. You are. It's going to be harder for you to do this c3 d4, and we kind of really do want to do this c3 d4. So it's important for us to keep that option open. So there's nothing wrong with knight d2. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the thing. Like you have so many different moves, but you have to try and play it smart and um, make sure that you're deciding correctly on which move order to play. Because uh, most of what you are going to be thinking about right now is the move order. To be fair, the taking on c6 is also quite interesting because after take, ooh, we got a cat on the table, pishi, stop shaking the camera, you're a big boy. Oh, I had a cat right behind the camera, it is so, so, so cute. Alright, um, this is also possible, now you have to be careful with potential bishop g4s, so h3, and then knight c3. And then you would just cast those. So that's something that actually um, white, sorry, that's something that black actually had played. The person who played white this game had this game played as black in this position. It's a little confusing. Um, let's call it Mr. W. Mr. W had played this game uh, it, it is white right now, but in this position he was black. Which is which makes it even more interesting because like you can see how he would play against this type of positions and so our lovely Mr. W continued playing very interestingly trying to form that kingside attack and I really actually like this ah Kitty stop shaking the table and yeah so eventually in this specific game Oh, we got a cat coming by. Sorry, everybody. He needs a big mama's boy. He needs attention. Sure, come here, kitty. Okay, let's have some attention so then you can go up here. Tree. Oh, big boy. No, no, don't hit the microphone. I don't need deaf audience. Go up. Come on, kitty. Well, there we go. I apologize if any 
anybody's ear was um, tickled by my cat's tail, fluffy tail. But besides that, let's get back to the chest of it. Mr. W. So, uh, thank you, Ahmed. Uh, Mr. W here played um, very interestingly, and it's, you see, it's ready to just pounce on this F5, right? So, and this is how actually the game continued, and why it is beginning to get into a funny pickle. All I need is like a cool sacrifice over here, maybe a little bit more pieces over there. But it's just so, white is just so, so, so helpless. Anywho, um, white ended up losing this game, and Mr. W, who is playing black in this specific position, won this game. Now, let's get back to the, um, position we were at. Now, Mr. W here played C3. Sure, you can call him Mr. White, why not? He's playing white in this position. And black simply played g6. So you see, I'm a big fan of the Fianke to my bishop and Roy Lopez, so to me this is a, this is very, uh, it looks very yummy. Uh, but you could also start it with like bishop d7 and then play like this. And this is actually a game that was in this this position is a game that was played between Steinitz and Lasker in that world championship match which is not the same game we're talking about but it's a little sideline which is kind of cool to see how different world championship matches are like combining together and colliding so um Anywho, I, I do like this g6 idea, but unfortunately for black, g6 was not enough. So, um, white has a bunch of different choices. Now, we could start going for d4, we could start with knight d2, or we could castle. Who wants what? Walter White, blow. Oh my god, I, I, I watched Breaking Bad um, for the second time last summer. Actually, it's... I watched for the first time in summer of 2019 because my coach told me it was a good show. And then I watched it, I rewatched it last summer just because well, I was bored and I had Netflix. Maybe I should make it an annual thing. Every summer we watch Breaking Bad. Oof, that'll be a lot of Breaking Bad. So I see that most people are kind of fond of castling. Um, well, if they castle just yet, it's a tiny bit too early. Nothing really wrong with it, but it feels like it's just a little too early. We could just prolong it more, which is, um, which is kind of. The goal, if we castle now, bishop g7 is a given. Oh, definitely got some cat hair in my face. Whew. And then we can easily continue with rook e1. And this was, again, another world championship. Uh, sorry, another world championship match. This was another game by another world champion. Smyslop actually played this um, as white. About maybe I want to say 50 years ago. No, if my math is right, more like 70 years ago. Yeah. Yep. Jeez. So, yeah, this was another game that another world champion played. Where, and the game actually went pretty swiftly. And as you can see, White is actually having a lot of fun in this game. A lot of cool pawns to poke. A lot of lonely pawns to eat, a lot of center things to do. Oh, that just looks amazing. So yeah, um, we have this cool stuff going, but um, let's go back to our 
question of should we cast or not? Well, casting is definitely a possibility, but um, what if we think? What do we think about d4? Heisenberger recipe? Whoa, what is that? Are we still talking about Breaking Bad? Because you guys are going to make me go watch that again, aren't you? Ugh. You see, I love my cat, but sometimes I just react to it for no reason. Like, most of the time I'm fine, but uh, at the same time, like right now, I should probably... I should have probably had an allergy pill handy. Oof. But yeah, you're gonna hear me sound very interesting. <laughs> Alright, let's keep this rolling as long as we can. Alright, um, the pro well, exactly, when you play d4, you want to do d5, don't you? So, um, Black's best choice is to do this bishop d7 and kind of hold on to this pin well i mean i guess block this pin take care of this pin take this pin away maybe that's the best way to say it. yeah and then after if there is a take 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 now white still has a tiny bit of advantage because of space because this bishop is kind of blocked this bishop is not but it's still very, very playable. So, um, this was also very interestingly, this d4 was actually played in another world championship match. Um, maybe not world championship, but a, a match between Steinitz and Zuckertort. So it's very interesting on how we, all these world champions play all these different moves. And it all comes together. So, in the game, uh, white played knight to d2. Now, the idea is I want to try and get my knight closer to this side first and then decide on my castling situation. However, one thing that I don't think um, it's, it's something that you, you should keep in mind is like, even if you get to go this knight g3. Your knight is a little bit, you know, uh, in a pickle. So that's one of the things that you should definitely keep in mind when you start with your plan of getting the knight to the other side, especially when there is this pawn on g6. Anywho, um, white, what do you think white should do? Your knight is all the way here, so you might as well think about getting it more activated. Or you could try to get this bishop out, or you could try to activate this bishop. So you have a bunch of options. One of our um, chats is saying that he's not a cat. Well, I wish I was a cat, but he's not a cat. Being all cute. thinking about spirit bringing the knight out good choice because well you gotta start castling soon <sighs> bishop g5 definitely another idea yeah i like knight e3 um However, this move of knight e3 was actually played in, um, so this is a world championship match, 
and this is actually game four of that match but in like game two of the match so two rounds before white had already played this knight e3 and um the game ended in a draw so white wanted to tr try something a little different so yeah that's kind of why white didn't really go for this knight e3 line in this game because he had already played it literally the last last two rounds uh well two rounds ago so white didn't really want to try knight e3 anymore knight e3 if knight e3 was played then um it could be responded by d5 and then just trying to get to this d, d file and this is a very interesting and white does look like it's doing pretty well however it's important to keep in mind that well because this game ended in a draw white did not play the move knight e3 anymore so white made a tiny bit of change and started with bishop a4 honestly again i think i th i do i do sincerely think that knight e3 is a pretty cool idea knight g3 is a pretty doable idea however white just wanted to do a little bit of um change change is good right so he played bishop a4 now after bishop a4 black played knight d7 there are other options such as bishop d7 d5 what do we think do we like any of those ideas trying i'm gonna highlight it for you while we try to to get a little deeper on them does anybody like any of these lines starting with knight d7 or bishop d7 or d5 what do you guys think D5? I, I think D5 is definitely interesting. Surprising, well, maybe not surprisingly, but kind of ironically. So as I said, this game that we're looking at is game four of the match between these two players. And uh, in game 14, so 10 games after this, but in the same match, Black actually did try D5. And it was pretty sharp, and it had a very. It, uh, we're gonna give it a quick look on how that game went, but we're not gonna go too deep into that game because we are still focusing on our line of not d5. But uh, in game 14 of these two amazing players, that's how it started to go. You know, it's kind of interesting because this uh, in Roy Lopez specifically, we don't really see this bishop being this involved in this diagonal because there's usually this a6 b5 ideas but in this game that's not the case and i think it's pretty cool so right now we are not looking at the game that's well this is a question of guess the world championship game however we are looking at the same match just game 14 of it so which is quite interesting because uh, that's something that I also talked about last week. How you um, you have to kind of repeat the same openings over and over again because there were so few known openings um, b before computer age, and it was so hard to actually trust someone to be able to collaborate with them and to actually get these um, get these um lines and preparations whereas today you can wake up and be like all right today i'm gonna go play this line or you can work on an opening for a, a few months and like instead of playing uh, e4 you can start playing d4 or you can start playing french or Karakan, or there's so so many different openings that you're not bound to just play e4 e5s and it's kind of funny because i've heard so many stories of super gms when they've like prepared a specific line that they don't really play often 
Um, and they like I think Swidler, whose story I'm thinking about, but I know it's, I didn't just hear it just about him, but like these gra like super grandmasters, they like stay up all night, prepare this amazing lines against against like a specific opponent. Imagine if we always play Rui Lopez and then we end up wanting to go play London or whatever. And, and then you go to the game and instead of playing first move d4, they automatically play e4. So it has happened and it's such a shock, but it's interesting because it kind of sh shows that it doesn't really matter how much of a the chess genius you are, you can still make very, very funny and painful mistakes like this. You want to play e4, you play d4. I've had few few like that. Like, never, I've rarely had problem with castling, like putting my king in the wrong spot, but I've had problems with like pushing pawns. Like, I've been meaning to like push with, like pawn to e5, and then I forget, they just stop at e6, and I'm like, why did I just do that? So, brain freeze is a very common thing. Anyways, I, I'm not saying, uh, I, I highly doubt that this was a brain freeze in this game, but my point being that. It's so interesting that the same opening kept happening over and over and over again. Anyways, uh, this game continued uh, like this, and as you can see, it's a pretty cool game because this actually this is my favorite position because you can't really take over here, kaboom! You can't really take that, kaboom! And anyways, uh, my point being that White ended up winning this game. This was game 14 of the match. Oh my god, look at this crazy piece activity. Maybe bishop c6 at some point. Oh boy, that's even way better than what I had in mind. Yeah, so as you could see, this, um, I really have to be careful not to say the name. And this game 14 of this mysterious match ended up with white winning too so let's go back 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 this was more like a sideline for us to enjoy some crazy tactics but in the real match and well this is a real match in the game at hand which is game four of this match it's getting a little complicated for me to keep track uh black white knight d7 bishop d7 is also possible but it's not that necessary i mean um Bishop d uh, Bishop d7 was actually uh, played in another World Championship match between Steinitz and Lasker, but uh, White ended up winning, and I don't really want to get too deep into that. Just uh, to mention, like you can still do knight e3, and you should still save your bishop, and you get to actually form a kingside attack. That's how. That's as deep as I want to go for that line. But what about knight d7? Knight d7. Now, what should I do with my king? Do I still want a short caster, or are we somewhat thinking about long castle? Is there anybody thinking about long castle? Also, a little mini announcement. For those of you who are here, please stick around because we want to um when we're done with this segment so in about half an hour or so we are gonna switch to twitch I, that's my favorite line switch to twitch and analyze your games so please stay around and have a game or two ready to send for our twitch channel so we have specifically increased the um game analysis from one hour to two hours so we are we will have enough time to enjoy and so yeah please make sure to stay around and do that anywho um we should definitely get this night out that should be the priority because we spent so much time bringing it from b1 to d2 to f1 we gotta put it somewhere we can't just keep it here so let's go knight e3. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of knight g3 just because even if you start pushing this pawn, your knight here is still a little misplaced. We could be under direct line of fire, it could be met by like h pawn, and you're kind of blocking g pawn too if you magically want to start pushing it. You can't. So we have to be quite careful on that. 
So knight e3. Let's say poke my the knight comes poke my bishop. I save the bishop and black also does this cool thing. Now, quick question. Anybody here want to play h4? If you don't want to play h4, you don't have to. You can easily castle. But what, which one do you think we should go for? Unfortunately, or fortunately, this is not a Nimzovich game. Alright, so I see that you are considering uh, h4 more seriously. Alright, so I see, I don't really see any votes for castle, so I'm assuming that most of you want to continue with h4. Yeah, I like that. h4 seems to be a, a lovely choice. Let's continue with h4. Um, after h4, black has to be very careful. Because, well, first of all, what if after h4, black can, uh, does this weird thing of h5? What would you do as white? Any suggestions? Where is Caleb? I believe Caleb is busy managing. I'm your new Caleb. <laughs> he still teaches uh, two of his classes, I believe, just on a different times. Yeah. I became Caleb about a few weeks ago. Actually, maybe a month. Wow, it's all, 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 almost has, it has already been almost a month. There we go. Yeah, all right. So this idea with H5, if H5 happens, the fun part is we can do this weird G3. Because after G3, if knight E7, boom, D4. If F5, boom, I'll take it. And then I will simply start to poke around here. And now Queen of is also coming up. So black has to be very careful. He can't just play whatever. If h6, boom, h5. Boom, knight f5. A lot of boom booms. If black tries to be funny and plays f5, what do you think we're going to do? Shall we take that f5? I see some G pawns. Oh, it is 6 a.m. in India. Wow. Well, thank you for being awake and watching. Well, we can easily take it. After take, then we have boom, d4, opening up this lovely bishop. If e4, boom, knight g5. Take, 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 check. King got a move. You bring this knight. Now you're attacking the queen. The queen. Ah, no. Well, if queen takes, thank you. But if the queen moves, then boom, knight f4. So many cool ideas. So yeah, there's like it, it's just really cool. Your king is still in the center, but it is not really going anywhere. So that's the beauty of it. Now let me go back, 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 back. Now we played h4. Let's say black is uh, still 
very awake and alert and plays knight e7. Now, what do you think we should do as white? Uh, also, uh, I wanna, um, I wish I could say boom during my game, but I don't think that's illegal. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna ask you for another question. Well, I mean, I'm gonna ask you that question. But, so, if you were, um, let me actually, hold on, let me rephrase. I'm gonna give you a little motivation. As soon as, well, I was gonna say as soon as we cast them. Yeah, as soon as we cast them, I'll give you a very big hint on whose game is this. So, make sure to find the right way, right moves, because we're not just gonna cast them just yet. So, what do you think? g4 looks interesting but our last one was h4 so why not to just push this why not to just continue with the same idea now after h5 you're not really gonna take that you're not really gonna push so the tension will stay and black is smart black is just gonna play d5 now we take this bad boy question what should this be taken back with which one do you think is better see that's <laughs> thanks for 30 minutes and boom you see that's kind of why i've grown used to playing online chess because i can't say boom when i'm playing um when i'm playing in real life i can't really speak boom so that's a slight issue believe me i want to but i just don't think uh, my opponents would be as excited about my saying boom that's the thing. Which one should you take it back with? Alright, Sparky, you are correct. You should take it with the H pawn because after H takes G6, now we have Queen E2. Next, we're going to do long, long castle. However, H taking is the best one because when you take with F, even though it looks pretty cool, um, it, there's going to be long-term attack with the bishop over here, long-term attack over here. It's just not really um, that pleasant. So that's kind of why it should be, you shouldn't in this specific game take it with the F pawn. So now, take, take. Now, how, how are we going to continue? Is this king and queen and this line giving you some chills? It's kind of giving me little chills. Little chills. Nah, c4 is unnecessary. Uh, I'm trying to exchange bishops. I also think that's just a little bit too, uh, too passive. Well, yeah, exactly, Sebastian. Let's get the bishop out. Let's poke the queen. You gotta move the queen. And keep in mind, you can't really be too adventurous. You can't really get too close to my king. You can't really go. I mean, you could, but it's still uh, going to be under attack. And queen c6 is your literally best move. You still keep some pressure. Queenie too, thank you, I Manny. 
Let's say black is uh, play black black in this game played bishop d7. What do you think about a5? Because white's probably gonna do long cast, all right? So a5 might wanting to uh, start some pokey ideas. Do you think that gets interesting? Queen, try to, no, I don't want to do rookish four just yet. We could just play a4 and block it. Yeah, exactly, block it with a4. Thank you. Good job, Robert. Yes. And if you try to poke me, eh, I'll just stay around. <laughs> All right. So after queen e2, the black played bishop d7. We're getting this bishop out. So now, is it time to finally castle on move almost 20, move 19? Is it finally time to freaking castle? It's been so long. Is it time to castle? Now, I, Manny, I've been, um, I got a suggestion to try to be more mysterious with my games. So I'm trying this new thing to see if people like it, to know who is this mysterious GM. Yes, it's time to castle, for the love of God. Let's castle. So now, I'm going to do a little, um, let's do a reevaluation. Revote or whatever. What do you think? Who is this game between? Even if you get one of the players right, I will say that you are right about one of them. Or if you you can give me a year too. This is definitely a world championship match. Just game four of that world championship match. White ended up winning this world championship match as a whole, and White also did win this game. Did win this game. So any. Any votes on who is this mysterious dude? Or dudes? Also, while you guys are thinking, I'm gonna praise my bishops a little bit. So, you see, this bishop is very, very nicely placed over here. And it's kind of just put bringing pressure. Um, at the same time, my other bishop on e3, or white's other bishop on e3, is kind of um, supporting this idea for, for d4 square. You might want to play d4 someday, you are stopping all the d4 things that could happen. Unfortunately, it is not uh, Ivanchuk, even though he's an amazing player. This is way before the age of computers. I saw, yep, uh, Medamin, you got it, you're actually correct, good, 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 good guess, or good educated guess, anyways, good job, yeah, uh, I, I have a feeling a lot of you knew this was Steinitz, first of all, because I am such a huge fan, so, yeah. So, what do we think? It is actually, um, Medamin got it right. This is Steinitz versus uh, Chigorin. Yeah, it's almost 1900. It's actually 1892. It's an old type of game. All right, let's keep going with this. Black played rookie eight, and this is a this is an amazing move. We have 
like seven more moves left on this position so i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you to try your best to figure out this move i'll give you some hints well it's obvious that the game is going on in the king side it's also obvious that needs white needs more pieces on the king side so those are some of the things that definitely needs to be addressed how can we bring more pieces basically How can white bring in more pieces? Knight g5, interesting, but the problem is my g5 you also provide too much access to your king side uh, to your king side and to your um eventual roads routes to king let's say if you play knight g5 if take take could take over here is attacking this bishop is attacking this pawn it's um not exactly what you would hope for bishop g4 coming up we don't want to exactly give black all these chances Rook h4, interesting, but we need to bring in the queen, and that's, I believe, why the move with knight was suggested. However, right now, your knight's kind of right over here, we don't really need to touch that. How about just queen f1? It's, it's kind of a weird move, I agree, but you could easily want to come and bring it up slowly, or you could want to up it up like that, but queen f1 makes perfect sense. You know, it's also a reflex. You play rook e8, I'm gonna run with my queen. You come here trying to threaten my queen, I'm gonna say nope, 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 bye. <laughs> Basically, yeah, this queen f1, I really do like this move. With queen f1, let's say if knight goes to f4, then simply we have d4. That's, that's one way to have it. Black is pretty busted. Another way to have it is if you don't touch your e6 knight and you try to play... That in that side, now I get to play d4. Remember, we said that we like this bishop to e3 because we wanted to eventually try to play d4. Because if I can get to exchange this bishop off the table, then I'm gonna have more of um, more room to breathe in the king side. So, yeah, we got that going. So, d4, boom, boom, bam. Now, Let's say black does knight takes d4. Do you see any cool tactics? Because I do. Sparky, um, maybe, but your queen really needs to be in the king side. So queen going to d2 doesn't exactly serve that purpose. We want to try to be as close as humanly possible. Take with bishop? No, always think of a checks first. Good job, you guys. Check, check, boom. And if not that, if something like queen e4, queen e4 seems to be the most interesting, and it was much later suggested by um, Kasparov. And Kasparov after this queen e4, well, what about knight f3? 
you want to, you know, still open it up. You want to eat over here for free. You might want to do a knight g5 cool thing. You might want to do a bishop d4 cool stuff. So you got a lot of things going. Knight f3, queen away, boom, queen d3. And attack on d7 and g6. It's very, very cool position. Basically, it's a bunch of boom, boom, bam, bams. So what if bishop d4, as happened in the game? We're almost done with this game. Let's push a little bit more. Any suggestions? We should definitely take it back, but with what? Exactly, took it with rook. Thank you, no glitching. If, if knight takes, then we have a very, very cool tactic right here. Where is my tactic? If you want, I can say it in the mother of dragon voice of where are my tactics? Or where are my checks? I should be in the mood for that. She had a very interesting where are my dragons quote. I need music background for that. But where are my where are my tactics? Seriously, we just gave up a rook, so where's my tactic? Uh-uh. If you take this too fast, it's not going to work because rook f6 will block it. Careful, we want it, we want to do it the right way. We need this bishop. Exactly, rook h7. Thank you, John Doe. Take boom. You gotta move this king. Boom! You needed this bishop to stay here to go to h6. You get the king up, another boom. King e5 and queen takes d4. It's almost checkmate. If you play king f5, just one way to checkmate, two way to checkmate. I kind of like g4 more. It's more powerful. So yeah, a lot and lot of fun stuff. This game was a game between Steinitz and Shigorin. In uh, World Championship Game 4, Hawa Hawana, oh, I cannot say it correctly, Hawana, uh, 1892. And this is another game, I'm a very big fan of the giant, uh, like the stick richest uh, giants of strategy, giants of innovation. They have a bunch of really awesome books, I strongly recommend them. This is something that I found from that book and it's extremely cool. So I strongly suggest that if you're looking for some cool books to read, definitely Steinitz, yes. Um, all right, so with that in mind, I am going to tell a momentary goodbye to you. However, don't go anywhere. Make sure to pick a game and meet me in Twitch in about 10 minutes because we are going to be analyzing your game through Lee Chess. So please feel free to join us for that. Um, be sure to send your game. We're gonna be there for two hours. So if you come here and if you see this video in an hour or so, you still have a lot of time. So make sure to join us on Twitch and send me your game so I can analyze it for two hours. Alrighty, perfect. I will see you in about 10 minutes. Perfect.